anti-colonial, anti-neo-colonial, anti-racist, and other liberation movements of the mid and late 20th century were taken up with the question of violence. Critics of the movements often sought to discredit them as dangerous, subversive, threats to peace and order. Christians engaged with these movements had to contend with the criticisms and also to think more deeply about what peace really is, what violence really is. Martin Luther King Jr. responded to his critics, those who pleaded for order and patience, by describing the intolerable, dehumanizing material and psychic pressures black people endured in a racist society. In 1968, the Latin American bishops, meeting in Medellin, Colombia, stated that peace cannot be understood simply as the absence of conflict. There is no peace without justice. The structures of everyday life for the great majority of people constituted a slow and steady but brutal application of violence, maintained by unjust political and economic systems. It was unsurprising to see a temptation to violence surfacing in Latin America. Spanish Salvadorian Jesuit philosopher and theologian Ignacio Ayacuría named structural injustice as original violence, a permanent violation of the human rights of the poor and marginalized. The movements and acts of forceful resistance to unjust power, founded on desperation and the desire to end oppression, he named revolutionary violence. Finally, he gave the name of repressive violence to all of the acts, legal and extra-legal, by state and non-state actors to crush resistance and maintain a system of domination. with other liberation theologians, he decried unjust, unnecessary violence, violence embraced without reluctance and with no eye toward preserving and sustaining the flourishing of life.
serás por siempre profeta guía de la libertad en estos tiempos de guerra tu valentía la realidad marcan con sangre al ti 